Hello guys, welcome back. Loki's still teaching me lessons. I had a dream this morning. I know it was from Loki. And I said, you know, at first I didn't get it. And Loki's like, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. I'm on this fantastic wooden coaster. And it's kind of this dark wood, wood coaster. It's enormous. It's like I'm riding in the coaster, but it looks like there could be a room for two or three tracks. It just, like, there's a huge amount of it, if that makes sense. And I'm riding in this coaster, and it's the best coaster I ever rode. It's a wooden coaster, but it's not boom like a wooden coaster. It's smooth. We go through all these loops. We go up to this high, high thing. And then we're coming back five times faster than we went. And oh, we're coming backwards on this coaster. And then you get back to where... I had started off in the coaster in the train, and you realize you're going to start creeping forward again. And even though you think to yourself there has to be a place where you get on and depart this coaster, this was just going to continue forever, and I woke up. And I knew Loki had meant it for a metaphor. And Loki's like, do you get it? Are you getting it? Because at first I thought I was in VR, and I was like, this is the best coaster ever. Is Loki telling me this coaster is out there? Is he telling me I'm okay for VR? What's he telling me? And he's like, do you get it? It's not about VR. Do you get it? It's a metaphor. Do you need to explain it? And then I'm thinking of it. And I'm thinking of it, and nothing's coming to me. I'm like, the ups and downs of life, what, what's he talking about? And I'm watching this thing about defunct land, about um, why did Hong Kong Disney kind of, you know, have so many troubles. At the end, I think it's Eisner that's saying that, you know, if you're going to have a creative product, you have to have a risk. And you have to be willing to take a risk. If you keep doing the same thing, the safe thing, you're never really going to grow. And they're showing this beautiful montage of all this stuff, like Psycho and everything else that took risks. And, you know, they're trying to make a point. If you're going to have a creative endeavor, like a channel or your life or anything else, you're going to either play it safe, and get the results from playing it safe, or you're going to have to take risks. Now, you notice when Odin wanted to be in charge, one, everything was going to end up glorifying Odin sooner or later, because he's very good at charming you into that. And as Dionysus has said, it's not even a contest between a god and a human, so that's not entirely fair. And he wanted to steadily work me towards heathenry, because Odin will be the god to lean down and whisper in your ear, in a voice you can't even hear to say, you know, it'd be very good for you. Become a heathen. You know, that'd be good for you. Become a heathen. Mm hmm Loki? Who's Loki? You know, um, there's Odin. Odin's a great god. You you really, really need to become a heathen and worship Odin. And he'll work his will on you. <laughs> He's cunning. He's not as a thief for good reasons. And I sense his inordinate amount of pride in his brother and Loki. Even though he was doing the wrong thing, <laughs> Loki's still proud of him. And Loki's the one that will have you go out and face all the big questions. Like, who is God? Um, All this stuff he's been exposing me to, he's been doing it for own purpose. Who is God? You know, who is God? Who is... They have God in the sense of in that church, and we're not all going to church, but it's a good example of this great, ineffable, unable to be totally comprehended by any one person God. And then they say, well, then that's perfectly okay and natural. It doesn't matter how you see God, whether you're seeing Zeus or the universe or Loki or whomever. It's just a valid experience. It's just you don't take it and use it as a weapon. I don't know where they found that really bad preacher. I saw that one time, but the way that priest explained it, he was like, didn't use those exact examples, but he was like, it doesn't matter as long as you have this experience. And Loki's pointing out that you need integrity and you need um, a genuine experience on the um, channel or in life. And he's pointing out, you know, it doesn't matter if I do the whole lot. And I decide it's this way to tap into Loki and I get real excited and come on here and I share it with you. Um, it matters on um, being, you know, genuine about it. He would not have me go towards heathenry because I thought it would grow the channel or be a financial gain. He's like, no. He's like, that would be a false front to put up because Odin 
if Odin was giving me suggestions, and he has, the feeling I get from Odin is, put up any false front you want, my dear. The idea is to make a success of the channel and to have it grow. And I kind of looked at him like, I thought you were all about integrity, man. And Loki's like, no, if you put up a false front, I will make sure I knock it down. I will knock it down. And he will find ways to do it, guys, that I will never be able to explain to you. Like, he will make sure that I'm compelled to make a video about what I really feel. And I put it in the recycle bin. And then I make the cover video of heathenry, ha ha ha. And, you know, I go to upload that. He will make sure that the video I deleted gets on to YouTube in place of the right video. And I've had it happen before. I've had something crawl out of the recycle bin, get onto YouTube, and be on YouTube. And I've looked at it. Now, it happened more on the other channel. I think it only happened once on this channel, but it actually ended up being okay. But I was like, how did he even do that? Because I know what I put in the recycle bin. And I know, because I double and triple check these videos before I upload them, I know what I uploaded. How the hell did he even do that? Well, it's lucky. So he will make sure we have integrity. And he's like, we're bringing this channel back to center because the more time you spent with Odin, the more you drifted off center. And the more you start saying dangerous words that don't work for you, my dear, like heathen, because he's like, these don't work for you. They don't work for you at all. He even really doesn't work for you at all because that's basically a dogma and it's basically all about the Norse gods and that's it. Loki's told me repeatedly, and he would do this for any of his people, he says, don't you realize that when a god really loves you, when they truly, totally adore you, it's not about them, it's about you. And if he had to take any one of us and give us to another god, he would. He loves us that much. It seems it seems rough when a god hands you over, but if he thought handing us to another god would be the best possible thing for us, he would do it because he loves us and he cares about us. He cares about himself, but he cares about us more in the end and he's willing to sacrifice for his people. He's willing to sacrifice, you know, having his people with him. He says, I don't care. If I thought it did you better to take you and put you in the arms of another god, I would. <laughs> <laughs> As you can imagine, I've been feeling Odin's not only ousted, but not altogether delighted about this. But, you know, Loki is my patron god. He's going to have a say. And that's the thing to remember. Sometimes people said in the past, you know, they've had a god either hand them to Loki or Loki's handed them to someone else. They do love us and they do care about us. And if they feel they can't get us any further, if they know that for whatever reason between the interactions between humans and divine... We can go further with someone else. They'll hand us off. And Loki's like, I want those doors wide open. I don't care what god or goddess walks in here. I don't care if you start talking to trees and plants and telling me there, there's a spirit in telephone poles. I don't care. You're going to do what you have to do and you're going to grow. And he's like pointing to Odin. He's pointing out. Odin will vaguely be around for a while. Odin won't withdraw all at once. It's very actually hard to get him to decamp, but Father Fox was there showing all of his pretty little fox teeth. <laughs> it's not really... So that was the end of that. And I'm like, well, that's that's how a god shows they love you. And Dionysus came flying back last night because Loki had just kicked the doors wide open where Odin was, you know, building doors and walls and a fortress and gun turrets and... Loki just kicked the doors wide open because Loki's all about freedom. And Dionysus came back and he's like, what's the matter? And I'm telling him. And then we're um, listening to music to heal. Because we do this thing. Loki loves it. Loki loves it. Loki's the main one. But we all listen to music to heal. And Ajio Ajio for Strings came on. And that's one of the songs that I love. And I was thinking, that's so beautiful. Where did I hear that first? And it is a classical piece. It was written, I think, in 1939. It is a classical piece. I'm like, that's so beautiful. I love that song. Oh, where did I hear that first? It must have been in a concert hall. <laughs> it's from Platoon. <laughs> it wasn't written for Platoon. It was written in 1939, but most of us would know it from Platoon. And it's just a beautiful song, and I played it again this morning, and it's like, it's one of those songs for me that touches God, whatever you want to call God. If you see universe, or this unknowable mystery, or you see Loki, and it kind of, to me, it speaks about 
God and God's love for you. So kind of like Loki's love for you or infinite unknowable. Um, Loki's really not cured cared much with me where exactly he is in my cosmos. He doesn't care if I see him as a smaller god and I see God as this effable, unknowable, transcendent being, or I see him as just one part of a god that all gods are part of or whatever else. He really doesn't care. He's more about the results of her life. And he says, you got way too far off center. You're coming back to center. And he says, the metaphor of the coaster was, he says, his channel's going to go up and down. He says, the more you come back on center, you're probably going to see losses. And you're going to feel at times like you went the whole way to the end of your adventure. And then it feels like you went backwards five times faster and you went forwards. And he said, that's life. He says, uh, you know, you're going to say something one day that makes somebody love his channel and join. And then the next vid video... Because of your human experience, you're going to see something, they're going to hate you, and they're going to go away. And he says, that's just that's just life. He says, I just care that you're honest. I don't care how many damn stupid things you manage to say in one video. And I'm like, how many stupid things do I generally say? And he's just like, mm. <laughs> He said, I just care that you're honest. It's all that I care about. He says, you're a flawed human being. But I just, you know, be honest. So, yeah, that was Loki. He, he he had me go to churching for a while to get the warm fuzzies, but then he's like, nah, you human beings are pretty good, but you're, you're far from perfect. <laughs> yeah, he loves us. He loves us. He reminds us by annoying us. I, I told you guys over on Patreon, he, he has been, either he has or YouTube's been taking away my dashboard at will, so I will get notifications that somebody said something. And I will go to answer them, and I won't have a dashboard, so that's always fun. So if you guys like what you see, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.